time for the big three, three stocks, three charts, three trades. Then Liechtenstein will take us through the charts here to take us through the trades. Scott Nations, President Nations Indexes. Great to see you both. Scott, what are you thinking about a market that's looking at seven weeks in a row of gains and some record highs? I think that the market loves the fact that 10 year yields back below 4%, that uh, it seems like the Federal Reserve is on course to cut a bunch of uh, interest rates. And I, I think that that's really what it is. If you look at our market, it just becomes hypersensitive to rates. It doesn't matter Bitcoin, gold, equities, everything looks good. Right, understood. All right, let's get to your first name, and that is Boeing. Tell me a little bit about Boeing today. Why are you looking at this one? Yeah, it, Nicole, it's probably no surprise to you that more than 40% of the names in the S&P 500 are technically overbought, meaning they have a relative strength index that's above 70. But, but Boeing is the, I guess, worst offender, if you will. It is the most overbought name in the S&P 500. It has an RSI of 92. And look at that chart. I mean, that's the sort of thing that induces vertigo. But in a market like this, uh, I, I don't want to short a stock, even if I think that something like Boeing has to come back to earth, if you will. And so in Boeing, because it is so overbought, the way to take advantage of a retreat would be to buy a put. Uh, specifically, I'm going to buy the January 250 strike put. Uh, when I was putting this together, you could buy that for $3.20, which is not very expensive uh, as far as a put is concerned for a $262 stock. So max risk anytime we're buying a put or a put spread is what we spend. And again, that's going to be $3.20 a share. Uh, again, January expiration. So we need Boeing to be below 250 for this put to be worth anything at that January expiration. Yeah, and it's worth noting that UBS adjusted Boeing's price target to 315 today from 275, maintaining a buy rating. So I wanted to get that in as we're going to take a look at the charts with Ben Lichtenstein. Ben? Does look a little bit overdone, Nicole. I'll give that to Scott, but uh, you know me, I tend to follow trend, and at this point, it still remains to the upside. So we can look at some levels to keep an eye on should we start to take them out that could start to kind of uh, establish some cracks in that working assessment. But let's just begin first and foremost with the move that we've seen uh, since mid-November. Uh, it has been and continues to be bottom left to top right. We're going back to when the stock was trading around 204. And again, to uh, Scott's point, here we are, look at this, at 263. I mean, this has been a significant move over the last couple of weeks. And uh, I went ahead and identified some of the areas where we've seen consolidation, some of the areas where we've seen value form along the way up. and. This helps us determine, again, when we're starting to see uh, the working assumption that we're trending higher start to come into question. That would be if we were to get below 249 right now, but this is a vertical move that we're breaking out of this 256 level here. So the bulls are looking for continuation of the pattern we've been seeing where you get that vertical separation, horizontal development, value form, and then again, kind of wash, rinse, repeat. Now, let's take a step back here because this is a chart going back to uh, middle of November. It's a 30 minute candle chart. I actually have a little more time on this one. This is a, uh, a hourly candle chart. We're talking about end of October when we were uh, responding and reacting to earnings, right? That uh, catalyst here that actually turned this thing around. Taking a look here, you can see on the way up here, uh, areas of consolidation that have formed at higher and higher levels. In this instance, let me just uh, find this chart. Here we go. Uh, you can see again, in earnings, we were trading around 176 in uh, uh, end of October and uh, November to remember, not only for the broader market, but also Boeing. Again, this really speaks to the vertical nature associated with recent price activity. You can see how uh, each instance in the past, we've uh, managed to hold on to key support areas that were established on the way up. Lastly, take a look at this. Uh, it really speaks to, again, that vertical nature associated price activity that we're seeing right now. And as I look at this chart here, Anything above 210 here is very bullish or above the middle of this balance area that we're forming here, Nicole. Again, I'm understanding what Scott's talking about in terms of things being overdone, but I've seen markets continue to rally for weeks in overbought conditions. This is a tough one to get in front of here. Mm, you know, and what do you think about the UBS call, Scott? But, you know, it makes, I, I understand why, but. Ben said he wants to follow the trend. I think this has turned from an upward trend to a mania. And if you look at the forward PE, which is a little goofy because of, uh, of some recent quarters where they posted a loss. But if you look at the next 12 month PE, it's nearly 200. It's at 195 for Boeing. So 
Uh, it just uh, people have closed their eyes and they've bought Boeing, and I don't think that that's going to work continuing. Okay, next up, Chevron. Uh, we're looking at Chevron, which has been in a downtrend this year. Uh, you know, I shrug my shoulders because it, it just, um, let's see, the CFO telling employees to perform better after, mi perform better after missing the 2023 objectives. There you go. Right, Your Nicole. Thoughts, but, Scott? Yeah, this is, if you're looking for a big company, a great company that you can buy at a reasonable price, which is very tough to find in a in a market where more than 40% of the S&P is technically overbought, that is Chevron. So again, a reasonable price with a forward PE that's just barely above 10, a dividend yield that's above 4% company that just makes money, if you will, very, very little debt. This is the sort of thing, the sort of company you're gonna buy it Forget about it for a few years, and you're going to come back and look at it in your portfolio in a few years. And you're going to be like, wow, that was a bargain. I wish I'd bought twice as much. Yeah, understood. What are you thinking about Chevron? Because when you see the, you know, energy has been the one sector that really hasn't participated, even as we took off, you know, November, we've had, we're up seven weeks. We just, it just wasn't there. Ben, your thoughts? Yeah, testing a key area here right now, but definitely a longer term bull trend. And I've got a short term uh, bull trend that we're seeing here behind me where we've got areas of value that have been and continue to be forming higher and that's how, what we look for, right, to determine trend, to follow along with, and then not only determine trend, but also see where it's starting to roll over or change. In this instance here, taking a look on the, well, five-minute candle chart, I've got two areas that my eye was drawn to. First and foremost, you've got the consolidation area around 142, around 149. But look at the strength that we saw uh, just uh, uh, through the middle of the week here as we rallied up and through this 145, 146 area. High conviction move to the upside. Now, I mentioned we're testing a key area of resistance here. Look at this chart. You can see basically going back to uh, uh, summer of this year, some weakness in the stock as we have come off here. This is a 60 minute candle chart here, and I want to show you in this instance two areas of value that have formed at lower levels, right? And then on top of that, we're actually testing this area here again, the highest from the beginning of November. So again, not necessarily what the bears want to see at this point uh, in terms of getting this little bit of a lift back above 145, but still holding above the highs from November and still holding below 165. So again, short term five minute, we're seeing value move higher. Intermediate uh, hourly candles, we're seeing value move lower. That's why I just went ahead and leaned on this longer term chart here. Shares of CVX here, you can see, as we look at the price activity going all the way back to the spring of 2020, when we were trading around 51, 56, Scott was talking about buy this one, hold it. You'll look back in a couple of years and be happy you did basically well. Uh, the longer term bulls have been happy with holding sh sh shares of CVX. You can see 78, 107, more recently balancing around 160. And then take a look because we were just talking about how we're testing this key area of resistance right now. That's just a small blip on the radar when you look at the fact that it does appear as if we just found support here. Again, a key area around 140. This one, get above 160 here. The bulls open up a door for a retest of 190. So I can subscribe to the bullishness on this one, Nicole. Yeah, and you know, we're getting some calls for all different things. Yesterday, a lot of uh, talk about the financials. Today, you're taking a look at energy. Jeffries was positive on solar. I mean, we're starting to get these calls for 2024. They're something different than just um, the Magnificent Seven. Scott, final thoughts on this one, and then get to Coca-Cola, please. Well, the, the, the thing I would say about Chevron is you're right. It's not one of the Magnificent Seven, so it's been ignored. Long-term investors can take advantage of that. All right, next up, Coca-Cola, which has been on an uptrend after hitting a low of $51 and change. Yeah, you know, the problem for Coca-Cola is that everybody knows that Warren Buffett loves it. It's never going to be a value stock. Forward PE of 21 means it's certainly not cheap. Dividend yield of only 3% means that it's not cheap. It doesn't pay a huge dividend. Um, and it's, but the, it's down six and a half percent over the past 12 months tough to find something like that in a big name in the s p and so let's buy a great company at a good price but let's do it really intelligently again i don't want to rush out and buy a bunch of stock with the market near all-time highs or at all-time highs so one way we can really reduce our risk and take advantage of the fact that coke options are very cheap 
is in the February expiration, I can buy the 60 strike call for just a dollar and 15 cents. Uh, and again, that was with the stock nearly $59. So we don't have to see Coke rally too much for this option trade to be profitable. Again, uh, we're just buy gonna buy a call, the Feb 60 call, a dollar 15 cents. Uh, we're gonna spend a little bit of money, but you know, the, the thing about buying calls is we get all this upside appreciation, but we also get downside protection because we're not buying the shares. Okay. Uh, ben, your thoughts on this one? Yeah, Nicole, uh, the bulls, long-term bulls, that is, in uh, KO have had a smile for a while now. And uh, they asked, actually, the intermediate uh, bulls as well. Taking a look here at the chart behind me, you can see 30-minute candles, the rally we've seen uh, throughout the month of November. Well-defined trend here. It's pretty easily identifiable. You can see earnings contributing to the catalyst, to the move up that we've seen all the way to the $60 level. Let me uh, show you some of the areas that my eye was drawn to in terms of uh, areas of value, value that are formed, consolidation. Now, one of them you can see I left with a question mark. Not quite sure about what's playing out here yet. It looks like we could be forming a new area to value, higher level, possibly around 60, 59.50. What's 50 cents amongst friends when you see, again, this well-defined pattern that's playing out? Areas where the market paused, it looks like almost every dollar, uh, buck 50, the market kind of in, in a very um, predictable manner sort of paused. And in, in that instance, that's why my eye was drawn to the $60 level or the possibility and exactly what the bulls are looking for in terms of area to form at a higher level above 5850 basically and 60 well let me show you why my eye was drawn to that area here's a daily candle chart so we're adding some time onto this discussion here and look what's been happening basically as you go all the way back to uh, the end of 2021 beginning of 2022 coke has been balancing around the 60 dollar level yeah we had a, a big dip down again into the fall of this year but notice brief period spent below the fall lows from last year and we held and honored that 54 dollar level there wasn't a lot of follow through down there with conviction or any real areas of value forming any significant time spent below that so back up above 60 opens up a door for a retest of 67.20 the highs that we saw in the beginning of 2022. Lastly, I want to show you what's going on here longer term. And again, significance associated with the $60 level bull pattern that we're seeing. This chart here, guys, goes all the way back to 93. As I mentioned, it's been a long time that uh, Coke has been rewarding and uh, one to hold on here uh, over the long haul here. You can see it's rewarded the bulls handsomely, Nicole. Yeah, long chart there. Thank you for that. Um, Scott Nations, final thoughts? It, you know, the problem with Coke is that uh, it just it's it's not cheap. It's never going to be cheap. So we can be a little more, well, savvy about how we buy it. Uh, and, you know, if we if we end up uh, making money on the call, we end up buying the stock. Congratulations. And then we can put it in the portfolio and look back on it in a few years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Charlie Munger, his three words were go for great. He was willing to pay up for great companies, and that was part of his, you know, theory on trading and strategy. Scott Nations, Nations Indexes, Ben Lichtenstein, thank you both for the big three today. Boeing, Chevron, Coca-Cola. Great to see you both. Thanks.